This is my new IK solver that I've been working on. It is an alternative to other IK solvers that I've seen for robot arms which attempt to avoid obstacles. I have not extensively researched this, however the algorithms that I was finding were very slow to do their calculations. Uh, my solution on the other hand is very lightweight or at least relatively lightweight. So the way oops, the way that it works is you randomly draw a chain of arm segments that can then be moved around. And uh, this here in its simplest form is a very trivial calculation. It is simply taking the original uh, joint angles of the chain and proportionally increasing or decreasing them uh, depending on whether I'm stretching or uh, squishing the chain. Uh, and then it's just uh, rotating the arm to meet the cursor location as well. So this is uh, good for uh, no obstacles. However, in the situation where I do have obstacles, uh, you know, clearly in a simple form here, it is just ignoring them. Uh, so you can see the collisions happening as I uh, move it around here. And I'm considering the width of the arm to be between these uh, red segments. So uh, the solution that I've come up with is to add some additional control to the the chain of arm segments. Previously I was controlling it only with the end effector. Now I have added on two additional uh, control points that can be used to organically modify the position of the arm segments to avoid collision situations. So uh, the way this is working is I am actually drawing a spline between the uh, end effector and the root of the arm. And these control points are modifying the uh, spline directly. And the spline is then indirectly controlling the, uh, the, the joint location. So what it's doing is at, uh, at its default it's finding the part along the spline that is closest to each joint location and finding the distance between uh, the spline and that joint. Then as the spline is being moved around it attempts to maintain that distance relationship. So as I bend the spline around it's trying to uh, maintain that distance so it can't always do it perfectly. But uh, regardless it still does a good job of uh, making it easier to control this joint. You know I could have as many joints uh, as I wanted to, oops, let me just, uh, you know, I could have something crazy like this, and it's just as controllable. In fact, it's e more easily controllable than uh, a uh, chain that uh, has just a few joints, but this would be a rather a bit of a nightmare uh, to optimize in other methods but you can see here it's following very nicely along with that sp uh, spline. Now let me uh, create a uh, different arm here. And now I'm going to turn on uh, obstacle avoidance. And there it's on now. And so I'm going to move this this way and it's going to collide with that obstacle but however um, it's doing its best to avoid uh, being in a collision situation. One thing that this doesn't do uh, is it doesn't maintain a memory of, okay, I am on the right side of this obstacle. Uh, so you can see it will pop back and forth 
you were having kind of a funny situation where it's this is not perfect I'll say but uh, this is a sort of a crowded situation and it's making the, the best of what it can uh, I'll randomize the obstacles again this is even more crowded um, it's still finding quite a lot of solutions that work uh, but it's difficult for that um, so it's uh, uh, it is attempting to optimize uh, the position so that you're not rotating the joints uh, too drastically from their original joint uh, angle and it is attempting to avoid obstacles. Future work again would be to uh, make sure that it maintains a left-right relationship as it passes through obstacles so that maybe you could snake it in and reach in through obstacles. Uh, just quickly here uh, at the bottom of the video you can see Windows Form application is this program. I wrote this in C Sharp, so it's it's a compiled language, uh, but it's not quite as tight as something like a C++. And uh, as it's doing this, it can be up to, you know, about 8% of my processor, um, which I have a uh, upper middle end uh, processor in this laptop that I'm using currently. So, thanks for watching.